Hey, I'm Brad from Fix This Build That, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a DIY sideboard. It's got a walnut top with tons of character. It's got inset doors and drawers, and the assembly on this is very easy, so anybody can make this one. This was the first build that I've ever filmed. I never got around to editing it because I was just a little too overwhelmed. But I found the footage, and I wanted to share it with you guys because I think it's a great project. It might be a little rough around the edges, but I hope you get some good information out of it. I started the sideboard with the legs. I used select pine 2x2s and I laid out a taper at the bottom to give the feet a little definition. I cut the taper on the bandsaw and then I sanded it smooth on my oscillating belt sander. The back of the sideboard has a quarter inch plywood panel. I wanted it to be flush with the back of the legs so I laid out a rabbit on the back legs to receive the panel. I cut the rabbit on the table saw with two passes. The first one makes the definition of the depth of the rabbit and then the next cut makes the definition of the width. Next, I moved on to the side panels, which are cut from 3 quarter inch plywood. I'm using a faux frame and panel with very easy joinery and trim since this is going to be a painted piece. I cut the side panels to size and I drilled pocket holes along the sides to join them to the legs. To assemble the sides, I used a 3 quarter inch spacer to raise the plywood up level with the inside of the legs. Then I clamped the pieces together and I attached them with pocket screws. This will be the inside of the cabinet and I'll fill these pocket holes before painting later. I flip the sides over and I cut the trim pieces to complete the faux frame. I used 1x2 trim for the top rail and 1x3 trim for the bottom rail and I secured them with glue and brad nails. I finished the sides by drilling holes for the adjustable shelf that will go in later. The sides are held together by a plywood back stretcher, 2x2s for the front frame and a bottom assembly panel. I cut the plywood stretcher and the 2x2s to size and I drilled pocket holes in them for joinery. I started by attaching the front frame pieces to one side. I used a small 2x2 piece that will be the center divider to space the frame pieces properly at the edges. Then I attached the back plywood stretcher flush with the rabbit in the back legs. This leaves room for the back panel. I stood the sides up, I clamped them together, and then I connected them with pocket screws. Attaching the center divider to the front frames defined my drawer openings, and now I just needed to make the bottom shelf to complete the carcass. I cut the parts for the bottom shelf and the adjustable shelf from 3 quarter inch plywood. The bottom shelf has a 1x3 front trim piece and a plywood cleat on the back which I cut earlier. I attached the trim and the cleat with pocket screws and I also drilled pocket holes on the ends of the bottom shelf to attach it into the sides. I temporarily clamped the bottom shelf in place and I used a spacer to get an even opening for the cabinet doors. Once aligned I attached the shelf and this finished the main carcass. The drawers are hung using side mount full extension drawer slides, so I needed a middle support to mount the slides. I used plywood here and I later had to use a spacer to shim out my drawers since the plywood wasn't a full 3 quarter inch. If you use true 3 quarter inch wood here, that would avoid this issue. Next I started making the drawers. I ripped all the parts to width from 3 quarter inch plywood and then I used my crosscut sled and a stop block to cut all the sides, fronts, and backs to size. I'm using a false front on these drawers and the finished front will be from solid pine. I drill pocket holes on the outside faces of the front and back of the drawers. After the false front is applied, you'll have completely hidden joinery. I sealed the interior of the drawers with two coats of shellac. It's much easier to do this now than when the drawer is finished and the bottom is on. I cut the drawer bottoms from quarter inch plywood, sealed one side with shellac, and then glued and nailed them to the bottom of the drawers. The secret with this method is you put a chamfer on the edge of the plywood. This makes the bottom panel disappear when you look at it from the side. I've got some more pictures on the blog that show it in detail, but I really like how this worked out and it was super fast. While the glue was drying, I cut and pre-painted some quarter inch plywood for the back panel and also a piece that I'd cut down into the door panels later. Next I mounted the full extension drawer slides in each of the drawer bays. To attach the drawers to the slides, I put the drawer in the opening on 8th inch spacers. Then I pulled the slides out until the end was flush with the front of the drawer. I secured the first screw, and then I've pulled the drawer out more to secure the second screw. I repeated this on the other side, and then I pulled the drawer out completely to secure the third screw on each of the sides to complete the install. I did the same thing on the other drawer, and now I was ready for the drawer fronts. I went ahead and cut the false drawer fronts now from solid pine and then I sized them for a consistent 1 16th of an inch reveal around the drawer. I'll install these later after I paint everything. The doors for the sideboard are made from 1x3 frames with a quarter inch floating plywood panel. 
I cut the frame pieces to size, airing slightly on the long side so that I could adjust later if necessary. I used tongue and groove joinery for the frames. I started by making some test cuts on the scrap wood to size my grooves. I tested the grooves on my painted plywood panels until I got a snug fit. Then I cut a groove in one side of all the door frame parts. Since the plywood is just under one quarter of an inch, I could make the groove with one fence setting, flipping the board end for end after the first cut. Next I made the tongues. The idea here is to cut a tongue on the end of the upper and lower rails of the door by removing wood from each side. The finished tongue should be the same size as the plywood panel and the groove. I did this with a standard table saw blade, but a dado stack would have made shorter work of these. There's a lot of setup and trial and error here to get these right, but the finished product is really worth it. I cut the pre-painted panel into the two door panels and then moved over to assembly. The nice thing about the tongue and groove joints is they are self-registering so you know when they are tight. There's also a lot of glue surface for a good hold. I glued the tongues and then I inserted the floating panels and assembled the doors. After checking for square, I put them in the clamps, locked them down, and then set them to the side to dry. Now here's my favorite part, the top. I used this amazing walnut I got from a local guy. The boards had this awesome old circular saw marks on them, and I wanted to save the character, so I only planed the boards on one side, leaving the other side rough. I cut the boards to size, and then I jointed the interior edges, and then I glued them up into a panel. I made a series of relief cuts in the center board to get it to lay flat, but unfortunately I don't have video of that. You can see some of the details on my blog post. After the glue was dry, I cut the panel to size on my crosscut sled. On that second cut there, the other end is supported off camera. To keep the character but have a smooth to the touch surface, I sanded with 80 grit and then 150 grit and really trying to get down into those saw marks as best as I could while keeping the character. For the finish, I applied a thick coat of satin spar urethane. Then I followed up with two thinner coats, sanding with 320 grit paper in between each one. There were a few things to finish up before I painted. I attached a 1x2 to the adjustable shelf for a nice edge treatment and some added support. On the sides, I installed cove molding. This helped dress them up a bit and add some detail. I plugged all the visible pocket holes on the inside of the cabinet, and I filled and sanded any other nail holes, and then I sanded everything to 150 grit. I also dry fit the doors and made a few minor adjustments with my block plane before painting. I painted the carcass, drawer fronts, and doors with a foam roller and a paintbrush where I needed to get into the details. I used three coats of gray satin latex paint, sanding with 320 between coats. After the paint was dry, I installed the door hardware. First I screwed the hinges to the cabinet frame, then I shimmed the door in place for an even gap on the top and bottom. I used a board clamped to the front of the cabinet to keep the door from swinging open, and I screwed the hinges to the door. I used magnetic door catches on the doors to help keep them shut. These were designed for 3 quarter inch material, so I had to reform the metal a bit to make sure that everything sat flush. For the door hardware, I used a kit to turn my own walnut knobs on the lathe. I've got a full blog post on this on the site of how I made them, but they just install like any other hardware and it's a perfect match with the top. To get a consistent reveal around the false drawer fronts, I used a trick with these playing cards. I did a whole video on this where you can see all the details, but after shimming the fronts, I attached them with screws from the inside of the drawer. The drawer pulls I used were also from a kit. I made these and the door pulls using offcuts from the walnut top. I love the contrast here and the subtle highlights of the wooden pulls and knobs when you're looking at the piece. With all the hardware installed, the last piece was the top and the back. I put the top on the sideboard and measured out a consistent reveal on all the sides. I attached the top with tabletop fasteners, which are basically just L brackets with some room for the screws to move with wood movement. I put the back in place and secured it to the cabinet with brad nails. And this is where I installed the adjustable shelf, but my camera card filled up. Whoops! We really love this sideboard and it's a perfect fit in our house. If you want to build your own DIY sideboard, there's a link down below in the description. That'll take you to my website where there are plans available as well as a full materials list that's going to show you everything that I use to make the sideboard. I'd love to have you comment down below. Tell me what you think about it. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more great builds. Until next time, guys.
get out there and build something awesome.